Shoulder dislocation anatomy. Shoulder dislocation is dislocation of the head of the humerus from the glenoid, which is a part of the scapula. The acromioclavicular joint is called the AC joint. When it is injured, they call it shoulder separation. Shoulder dislocation is different than shoulder separation. Here you can see the shoulder separation on the left and the shoulder dislocation on the right. Here is the proximal humerus. You can see the head, the shaft, the greater tuberosity, and the lesser tuberosity. You can also see the cuff muscles, the subscapularis attached to the lesser tuberosity, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor are attached to the greater tuberosity. Here you can see the axillary nerve that can be involved in shoulder dislocation. The most common associated lesions with dislocation of the shoulder are Bankert lesion, Hillsax lesion, cuff tear in the elderly, axillary nerve injury. and the greater tuberosity or lesser tuberosity fractures. The shoulder joint is the joint between the head of the humerus and the glenoid. The labrum is attached to the glenoid. The labrum reinforces the glenoid cavity and acts like a bumper within the joint capsule of the shoulder joint. It deepens the socket by about 50%. During shoulder dislocation, there will be injury to the labrum, and it is called a Bankert lesion. Bankert lesion is associated with a high recurrence rate of dislocation, especially in young patients. Bankert lesion is present in about 80 to 90% of patients with TOPS. TAPS is traumatic unilateral Bankert lesion requires surgery. Bankert lesion can be fibrous or bony due to avulsion of the anterior labrum and the anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament from the anterior inferior glenoid. Bony Bankert will be present in about 50% of patients with recurrent dislocation. Bony deficiency of the glenoid of 20 to 25% or less will make the shoulder very unstable and arthroscopic surgery alone with soft tissue repair is not sufficient. Deficiency of the glenoid 20 to 25% or less will probably need bony augmentation procedure for the glenoid. The best study to know the exact or accurate deficiency of the glenoid is a CT scan of the glenoid with 3D reconstruction. With failure rate up to two-thirds of the patients, you will need bony augmentation procedure, such as letter J procedure when you transfer the crocoid to the glenoid. You may also use an ilia crest bone graft Latter J for glenoid bone loss more than 20 to 25 percent, especially in inverted bear deformity of the glenoid. Calf tears occurs more in the elderly with dislocation of the shoulder, about 30 percent in patient more than 40 years, and 80 percent in patient more than 60 years. If the patient is unable to lift the arm after reduction of shoulder dislocation and the patient is young, think about axillary palsy. And if the patient is old, think about rotator cuff tear. 
at the head of the humerus impacts against the anterior inferior edge of the glenoid. A lesion is created in the posterior superior aspect of the humeral head called Hill-Sachs lesion. It is present in about 80% of acute traumatic dislocation and in about 25% of traumatic subluxation. Ramblassage procedure is used for Hill-Sachs lesion. If the defect is large more than 25%, the posterior capsule and the infraspinatus tendon are sutured into the hell sex defect. How about the subscapularis? Does it have any role in shoulder dislocation? In posterior shoulder dislocation, the lesser tuberosity can be fractured. If you have posterior dislocation less than six months and the reverse hell sex lesion, less than 40% of the humeral head, you will do open reduction and subscapularis transfer, to call it McLaughlin procedure, or lesser tuberosity attached to the subscapularis transferred to the defect. So how about the Hagel lesion? It's humeral avulsion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. It is more in violent sports injury, it's uncommon, and it is unrecognized. And it can cause recurrent shoulder instability. It is associated with a higher recurrence rate if not recognized and repaired. And the MRI will show the inferior pouch irregularity. How about the anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament? It is an important ligament. Its injury will cause anterior translation of the humeral head at 90 degrees of abduction and external rotation into the apprehension position. The posterior inferior glenohumeral ligament, its injury will cause posterior translation at 90 degree flexion and internal rotation. In general, anterior labral tear injury you see it in the axial view on an MRI. The image is enhanced by a dye, and the anterior instability is diagnosed by apprehension test. The biceps groove is anteriorly. Posterior labral injury will cause posterior instability and causes more pain than instability. The posterior labral tear is seen in the axial view on the MRI. You can diagnose this injury clinically by the jerk test or the Kim test. Why are posterior shoulder dislocations most commonly in scissors and electric shock? Because the shoulder internal rotators, the subscapularis, the latissimus dorsi, and the pectoralis major are stronger than the external rotators. Watch out for normal variants of the labrum that looks like an injury, but not an injury. Normal variants of the labrum are the sublabral foramen or the Buford complex. Do not repair them because the patient can lose motion, especially external rotation. I tried to explain to you the anatomy of shoulder dislocation, and I hope it was helpful.